I'm going to face um, a problem soon. So this book is going to be coming out imminently. It might be ready in the next 48 hours. So in about three months, there's a documentary coming out. And in the book, I'll be talking about narcissistic abuse, CPTSD and overcoming codependency. And in the documentary, I'm talking about the same. I'm going to get pigeonholed. And I don't really know how to do this because it, it's, um, it's going to create tension. It's going to create problems. Pigeonholed as a uh, quote unquote mental health advocate, which I'm not. I'm not an advocate for anything. If I'm an advocate for something, I'm an advocate for just, I don't know, absurdism, absurdism. And then sometimes I, I'll be talking about, you know, mental health issues and then I'll do like a joke about huge dongs or something because, because, because I want to and because I think it's funny and because things being funny is really, really important to me. <laughs> if things weren't funny, I just wouldn't bother with existence anymore like the only, one of the few things I stick around for is for funny stuff <laughs> like this is actually pretty funny um, b b beyond the tragedy there's a boyish kind of urge to piss people off for its own sake sometimes and we've got to we've got to curtail that but I also have an innate gift that I don't think I don't think I developed I think I was just I just seem to have it to make complicated things a little bit simpler and a little bit more entertaining to, to consume. I find the mental health advocacy community prudish, prissy, mealy-mouthed, false, tight-lipped, withholding, double-talking, excessively politically correct, being really, really worrying too much about not offending people, and way too obsessed with that which is appropriate and that which is not appropriate. It's too controlling. It's too dry. It's too controlling. It's too dry. I fucking hate all that shit. That's why I take the piss out of sounds true. You know, every sounds true thing and the same people, the same types of people on YouTube that you guys are always like, oh, have you seen? Buh, buh, buh. And I turn their videos on and they're like, buh, 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 buh. shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Be normal. Why can't you just be real? What are you trying to be? Sounds True Productions. Sounds True. No, fucking sounds true. Sounds fake. Do you want to lose ironic, shocking statements? Would you rather that they were just wiped out in the name of not offending anybody? So, so nobody ever say anything outrageous. That is the death of comedy. Comedy's gone. You can't overstate the case. Or you just say, no, I want the person who's just like, I really honor and respect the intent of everybody who that's the fucking creep that's the fucking cult leader that's the fucking weirdo that that's a liar that's a liar if we keep walking along this path we're going to lose the meaning of all words i think these terms should be kept discreet they should be boundaried we shouldn't engage in this weird safetyist protocol of expanding the meaning of everything so everything is bullying so basically if somebody says something you don't like or, or it's a hate crime really shouldn't we keep Bullying, hate crime, racism. We should keep that for things that are quite serious. No, because you should do it for, for the micro as well. Okay, I understand your argument, but do you understand my argument that if you do that, we're diluting the seriousness of the serious cases. Diluting the seriousness of the serious cases. Shut the fuck up. Be normal. Why can't you just be real? Why can't you just be real?